other cancers, nervous system and blood disorders, and allergic reactions have occurred. Tell your doctor if you've been someplace where fungal infections are common, or if you're prone to infections, have cuts or sores, have hepatitis B, have been treated for heart failure, or if you have persistent fever, bruising, bleeding, or paleness. Don't start Embrol if you have an infection like the flu. When opportunities come your way, be ready to say, I'm in for what's next. Ask your doctor about Embrol. I'm Edward James Almost here to remind you that the second Saturday in May is the annual letter carrier food drive. The need for food assistance remains high in communities across America, but you can help. Simply leave a bag of non-perishable food near your mailbox on the second Saturday in May and your letter carriers will do the rest. All food collected stays within your local community. So on the second Saturday in May, please join me and the National Association of Letter Carriers and stamp out hunger. Now on the KTLA a Morning News at 9, new details about an alleged sexual assault on the campus of Modern Day High School. What a former football player says happened to him in the locker room. And a former corrections officer is dead. The inmate, she helped to escape from jail back in custody after a nationwide manhunt. We'll tell you what happened when U.S. Marshals caught up with the couple yesterday. And the mayor of Los Angeles just made a major announcement. Breaking news, uh, President Biden talking about inflation. Let's go ahead and listen in. Americans uh, have applied to start uh, 5.4 million new small businesses last year, 20% more than any other year on record. And I see, uh, and as I see it, everything, everything uh, across the country is, as I go across the country, our economy is gone from being on the mend to on the move. But for every worker I met who's gained a little bit of breathing room to seek out a better paying job, for every entrepreneur who's gained the confidence to pursue their small business dreams, I know the families all across America are hurting because of inflation. I understand what it feels like. I come from a family where when the, when the price of gas or food went up, we felt it. It was a discussion at the kitchen table. I want, uh, I want every American to know that I'm taking inflation uh, very seriously, and it's my top for domestic priority. And I'm here today to talk about s solutions, and there's going to be more we're going to have to talk about as well. But first, I want us to be crystal clear about the problem. There are two leading causes of inflation we're seeing today. The first cause of inflation is a once-in-a-century pandemic. Not only did it shut down our global economy, it threw the supply chains and demand completely out of whack, especially in countries where more effective recovery responses uh, uh, weren't available, especially in those sectors that rely on semiconductors. These supply challenges have been further uh, hampered uh, by uh, the onset of Delta and Omicron viruses. And you've all seen it. You've all felt it. And this year, we have a second cause, a second cause, Mr. Putin's war in Ukraine. You saw, we saw in March that 60 percent of inflation that month was due to price increases at the pump for gasoline. Putin's war has raised food prices as well, because Ukraine and Russia, two of the world's major breadbaskets for wheat and corn, are essentially completely stalled. Ukraine has 20 20 million tons of grain in storage in silos right now. They're trying to figure out how to get out of the country and to market, which would reduce prices around the world. Normally, normally we'd have already begun to export them into the market, but it's uh, but it hasn't because of Putin's invasion. So we're working with our European partners to get this food out into the world so they could help bring down prices. But it's difficult because, again, of Putin and the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And those two major contributors to inflation are both global in nature. That's why we're seeing historic inflation in countries all over the world. But here's the good news. Because of the actions we've taken, America's in the stronger position to meet this challenge than just about any other country in the world. Some of the roots of the inflation are outside of our control, to state the obvious. But there are things we can do and we can address and we need to do. That starts with the Federal Reserve, which plays a primary role in fighting inflation in our country. I put forward a highly qualified.